Hello and welcome to Longevity. Today we're here to take a look at the MIGWELD 200S, a combination MIG welder, stick welder. It's a machine that has a 60% duty cycle, which means that we can weld for about six minutes out of every 10 with it. It's capable of 30 amps to 200 in the MIG welding mode, and it's capable of 30 amps to 180 amps in the stick welding mode. Let's take a moment here to look at some of the components that come along with the machine. So for stick welding, and MIG welding, we need to have a work clamp. So it comes with a work clamp and a work lead that connect to the front of the machine. And we'll take a look at those connections in a few minutes. It also comes with an electrode holder or a stinger. This is used for shielded metal arc welding and stick welding. It also comes with a combination chipping hammer and wire brush that we can use to clean up our work. It also comes for MIG welding, it comes with a spool of ER70S-6 030 carbon steel filler wire. This is about a two pound spool. It also comes with a MIG welding gun that connects to the front of the machine and we'll take a look at those connections in just a moment. And it also comes with a wrench and a couple of extra contact tips to get us going. And then if you don't already have a welding hood, it comes with a simple handheld hood here and it also works great for if you've got friends or family that want to take a peek over your shoulder and see what's going on. So let's take a few moments and look at some of the settings on the face of the machine. Next, let's take a look at the front of the MIGWELD 200S. We can see right here there's a light for MIG welding when the MIG welding process is selected. Next to that is a stick welding light that comes on when the stick welding process has been selected. Next to that is a light that comes on if we've exceeded the duty cycle of the machine or there's an internal fault signaling that we require some type of service. Next we'll take a look at the process knob here. So that gives us the option to select MIG if we're planning on doing the wire feeder or stick if we're planning on doing shielded metal arc welding. Next to that is the MIG torch spool gun knob that allows us to turn to the wire feed if we're going to use the rollers and the wire feed internal to the machine. And then if we purchased or we've got the external spool gun that's an option, we put that setting on right there. The next one we're going to take a look at is down here in the lower left corner, and that's the wire speed stick amps knob. So that goes from 1 to 10, and that's where we're going to adjust on stick welding, we're going to adjust the amperage, and on the MIG welding side, we're going to adjust the wire feed speed right there. The next knob we're going to take a look at is the voltage and arc force knob. That allows us to make adjustments to voltage when we're doing MIG welding, and arc force when we're doing stick welding. And then finally, there's a waveform knob here that allows us to make some subtle adjustments to the arc. In one direction we get a crisper arc, and in the other direction we get a little bit softer arc. So there's our controls for the front of the MIGWELD 200S. Okay, now let's take a look at the connections on the front of the machine. In the lower left there, we see the negative terminal where usually we're going to connect the work lead. So the work lead installs into the plug, turn about a quarter turn to the right, and it should be secured. The next component we'll take a look at is on the lower right. That's the positive connection, and quite often we'll connect the electrode holder or the stinger right there for electrode positive welding. Quarter turn to the right, and it secures that. The next thing we can go ahead and install in the face of the machine is the MIG welding gun itself. Inside near the drive rolls there's a small wing nut that needs to be loose to allow us to install the gun into the face of the machine. So verify that that nut is loose but not so loose that it falls off. Slide the gun directly in, sliding it in until it comes to a stop, and then secure it in place with the wing nut on the inside of the machine. Once you have the wing nut tightened up, then the last unit that we want to connect is the trigger gun or the remote. So we stick that onto this connector right here, 
we get it so it lines up and then we rotate this about a turn and a half and it should be secured. And there you go, we'll have the connections to the front of the machine. Next, let's take a peek inside the wire feed unit on the side of the machine. I've removed the door for clarity so that we can see what's going on inside. In the lower left here, we see the wire feed unit and the drive rolls. Here is the bale that we can open and close to apply pressure to the upper feed roll. R directly above that is two knobs here that allow us to move the welding cable from either the negative position or the positive position depending upon the type of wire that we're running and the suggestion from your manufacturer of your wire. There's also a quick feed button in here to jog the wire to help feed it into the unit. And then here's the spindle at the back where we install the wire to feed into the wire feeder itself. So to install the wire, we remove the wing nut in the center of it, set that to the side, and then there's a rubber bushing that we have installed on there. And note that there's a small keyway on the bottom of the thread that has a spot on the bushing that we need to make sure that we put back on correctly. Next thing I do is I get my two, two pound spool of ER70S wire here. I'm gonna get that installed on there. And we wanna make sure we install it such that the wire peels off the bottom of the roll and comes directly into the feed unit itself. So that's some calls we get here frequently that people are having problems with their unit feeding and they've installed it where the wire tries to come off the top and through the guide rolls and out and that makes it very difficult and we get very sporadic feeding of the wire. So make sure that you've got the wire peeling off the bottom and coming directly into the gun. Okay, I wanna make sure that I install the bushing back on there, making sure that the keyway on the bottom is lined up correctly and that I've got that on there. And then also that I put the wing nut back on there as well. Okay, the next thing I need to do is, is back off my piece of wire here out of the spool and I want to make sure that I don't lose it here I make sure I got enough tension on the spool here so I don't lose it and then that bent up section at the front there I'm gonna go ahead and clip that off let that go I need to probably back off the tension here just a little bit and then I want to paying attention to not lose the wire on the spool here I'm gonna release the tension on the bale. I'm going to lift up the upper feed roll here and then I'm going to carefully feed the wire through the guide tube and into the face of the MIG gun itself there. Okay, once I've got that set up then I can lower and close the upper feed roll and then reinstall the bale itself applying tension to the wire. Now if I want I can hit the quick feed button and feed the wire into the unit. Okay, now we've got the wire fed all the way through the gun. There's a couple more components that we want to install and make sure are set up here on the end of the gun. So I've got the wire already through and now I'm going to go ahead and install the contact tip. So the contact tip is where the wire actually receives the electricity from the power source. And we want to thread that unit in there so it should look like that. And this contact tip is a consumable, it'll wear out or the wire will burn back to it occasionally and it needs to be replaced so it's not something that lasts forever. And then the last unit that we want to install here is, is the gas cup that goes on. And as we put the gas cup on, we want to press forward and turn slightly to get it to come on. So now we should be able to squeeze the trigger and get the wire to come out of the gun. So it looks like we're ready to start welding here shortly. We just need to install the regulator and the hose to get the gas flow going and we should be able to give it a try. Okay, now that we've got it set up, let's see how this guy runs. Once we get the arc established, we want to keep the wire on the leading edge of the puddle and make a small circular motion to keep the profile of the weld flat paying attention to make sure that it's full on both the top and bottom toes. 